Hey guys, it's uh, Mr. Foster here. I got a quick screencast for you on DNA replication. I know we've been working hard on this. Uh, so, I th and you guys are making your own screencast, so I thought I'd throw one out there for you too. Uh, before we get started though, I wanted to make sure that we recapped on that structure of this molecule of life. Uh, and make sure that we are, um, you know, do a little review here. Remember that adenine is always going to pair with thymine. So in here on your nitrogen basis, that if an adenine is here, then you're going to have a thymine on this side. And if cytosine shows up over here, then you're going to have guanine on this side. And that is the key to our DNA code. It's right there in the middle. And also don't forget that the structure of the outside or what they call the DNA backbone here is consisting of the deoxyribose sugar and a phosphate so it is alternates between the two and then we did learn from doing our drawings that uh, there's directionality on these sides and that they run in opposite directions remember from the uh, race of the double helix that like crick was the one that didn't figure out that they're anti-parallel and, and that this is important in DNA replication and the fact that hey on this side if the sugars are, are running in a three to five prime direction this way. In other words, that oxygen and the deoxyribose sugar is on the top of the uh, sugar running this way, which is closest to the five prime uh, carbon and the threes on the bottom, then, then we're running three to five this way. So that means the other side should be running three to five in the opposite direction this way. Okay, so just remember those things as we move forward. So let's get into this DNA replication and see how DNA goes about making copies of itself, um, which is really important because when your cells divide, you need a new copy of your DNA for each of those cells. Um, and we learned about this in the cell cycle, and this happens during the S phase or the synthesis phase. So let's dive into this. So this is a nice picture here um, showing the original strand, uh, and then it's split by the helicase here. This is an enzyme that splits it. And I, I will add to that this is what they call the semi-conservative model. In other words, uh, you end up uh, taking the parental strand, or the old strand, which is dark blue, and then creating a new daughter strand here next to it. So each new strand will be half parental and half uh, daughter. And this little insert picture is kind of neat too because it gives you a sense of how the DNA actually goes about doing this because DNA is very long and it doesn't just go from one end to the other. It actually occurs in what they call these replication bubbles. And so you'll have it start inside and actually go in both directions. And you'll actually have multiples of these bubbles until they all connect and then you end up with two complete new strands of double helix okay both sides so let's dive into this and I know you guys have been working on this so hopefully I can help uh, clarify any misconceptions you have and you can certainly ask questions in this class so like I said the helicase is the enzyme that's responsible for uh, unzipping the DNA in the middle here and as it does that you're going to see there's single strand binding proteins that actually attach on right after the helicase and kind of help give the DNA uh, that each side, the strands, some structure uh, to hold them together because they're no longer bonded together here in the middle where the nitrogen bases are. Now the, the leading strand, which is up here, they call it the leading strand, and the reason they say it's the leading strand is because this part is kind of easy um, for to be copied uh, because uh, DNA polymerase 3 is able to just hop on there and follow the helicase you know, just like going down train tracks and attach free nucleotides that are in, in, in this area and match them up with the, uh, you know, Chargoff's rule, A to T, G to C, and just follow along and keep doing that. So that's what DNA polymerase 3's job is to do. Now, um, how does it know where to start? Well, there's a RNA primase, which is another enzyme that actually will add in a primer back here so that the polymerase then knows it's a marker that that indicates where that DNA polymerase 3 should attach and then start moving forward. Now remember this there's a key piece to this is that the DNA polymerase 3 can only read the DNA in the 3 to 5 prime direction. 
So here's the 5 prime down here. That means this opposite end down here that you can't see is the 3 prime. So that's why this is the leading strand and it's nice and easy for the DNA polymerase to copy because it, it finds that 3 prime in and just starts going along here. Just working away and putting in those, those free nucleotides and matching them up. Okay, and it's going only three to five prime in. Now, do you see the problem when we look down at the what they call the lagging strand? Look closely at it. Look, this is the five prime end and the three prime. Remember, they run in opposite directions. So when DNA polymerase comes in and tries to do the same thing, it's like, no, nope, don't recognize that end. So what does it have to do? It has to journey all the way in here right next to the helicase, connect on. And then it goes, oh, yes, I can do this, three to five this way. Well, that creates a little issue because the helicase behind it is continually unzipping the DNA, which then creates these gaps or new exposed uh, nucleotides on this parental DNA. And so that's why you have these gaps here. Uh, the way that this is taken care of is that this, this side of the DNA is done in segments which are then kind of repaired to make sure it is a complete uh, new strand like this one up here. So let's talk a little bit about this. So what ends up happening is the primase, RNA primase, still has to indicate where to start, just like it did on this one. So it first comes in, attaches on, puts its little primer, which are RNA nucleotides, not DNA nucleotides. This is an indication of where that DNA polymerase should attach and then start. So then the DNA polymerase comes in next, finds that primer, jumps on, and starts to go and work its three to five prime magic in this way, and building five to three. So it reads three to five, builds five to three. Where does it know to stop? Well, it will run into the previous primer that was laid down before this was even available. So everybody get that? Think about that. And you can see it if you go move further down this lagging strand, you can see where these primers are located. Now these little fragments that are built in here are called Okazaki fragments, named after the scientist that discovered these fragments. So that DNA polymerase 3 will come in, find the primer, and start working its way to the next primer. And then it'll do it again, and then it'll continue to do it. That's all part of the lagging strand. Now we're not we're not done because we got to get rid of these primers, and this is not complete, and we got to fill in these gaps. So there is another DNA polymerase one. That's job is it's an enzyme, it's a protein. It comes in and attaches where those primers are, and removes them and puts in the correct DNA uh, nucleotides that match according to A to T, G to C. And after it does that, there's still a little bit of a gap there. Then DNA ligase, here you go, he's another enzyme, comes in and connects the bond between those phosphates and sugar that make up that backbone that we were just talking about. That will then complete the strand and remove all of these um, gaps in here where the uh, primers were left in the lagging strand, making a continuous DNA strand like this one up here. All right. So hopefully you're understanding that. This is definitely a more arduous process because of the fact that the polymerase is only going to be able to read in the 3 to 5 and not continuous like this one. So it's got to keep coming in and doing it in fragments. Okay, so sit and take a look at this picture and think about that for a little bit. All right, and in the end, then we'll get two new strands identical because of the base pairing rule of a parental strand and a daughter strand, and the DNA will be copied. I hope this helps. If you have questions, certainly ask in class. And here is a link to another little nice DNA replication 3D animation if you'd like to watch. Bye now.